Hey, I'm JD and welcome to my channel, uh, JD's Watch Service or Watch My Service. If you want to get a hold of me to do some work, contact me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Gmail so, so today uh, we got a few things we're going to talk about before I start servicing, but um, the first thing is uh, let's see if this camera's in focus. Focus, focus, look at that. Sharp, sharp sharp as my professors from university so so this little watch here is a size six um, it is a Waltham it's a beautiful little Waltham that I've got to work on today and I'm working on this watch for a gentleman named Luke actually he just sent me an email this morning and said said probably with a French accent he said hey JD uh, is there any chance uh, you're going to do the rest of the watch today, or am I going to have to work, wait till another five years for this watch to be finished? Uh, I do not know. I'd like to know. So anyway, I've been communicating back and forth with Luke. That's my French accent. I'm allowed doing a French accent because I was born in France. So, and I'm half French, so I'm allowed doing it, Luke. So please don't take it to heart. But, but I can order breakfast in French too. I'd live. I'd like a two eggs facing the sun, bacon parallel, toast brown, coffee in a cup. Never mind. I'd change my head. That's my French breakfast. Hopefully you're getting a chuckle out of that. So um, this uh, watch, uh, size six, Waltham, need a new balance staff and I got received my, uh, my balance staff for this yesterday from Dave's watch parts. I know I'm plugging them all the time and hopefully he'll give me a better deal, but <laughs> his deals are actually excellent. So there's no problem there at all. And actually I've, or I basically ordered the wrong one. I think the first time not giving him all the dimensions and so the first one didn't work, so I got the second one in the mail, and here it is here for an S6. That's it there, so we'll be fitting that today. Um, I have a little card here that I made up for the dimensions. I basically made this card up, and then I sent him a photo of the card. So that's just some advice for if you want to get a, a balance staff from any supplier, do this, send the card like this, and then send him a photo with the email so there's no discussion as to the size of the balance staff. Of course, you're doing a little bit of an estimate on the on the uh, length of it at 4.46 because you've got usually a broken pivot on one side and uh, you're not really sure the absolute length. But the, the pivot on one side is broken is probably the same size as the pivot that was on the other side. And usually the pivot uh, diameters, I got 0.12 as a diameter here. I need my pointing tweezers today. So that pivot diameter is usually the same on both sides too. Unless, unless, and it's happened, a watch a watchmaker had replaced the uh, upper or lower uh, jewel and or setting with a jewel and you've ended up with a with a pivot that's a different size because they made a balance staff or something and changed it so I run into modifications I wasn't expecting I don't know why this is working this way blah 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 so so it's always good and all when you start just before you start working on a watch if it's uh, running at all take a video of it running so you can see what uh, or, or test it to see what the amplitude is so you can see where the, where the improvement has been um, and so that's a good idea also demagnetize it and just a note on demagnetizing I've tried all kinds of different ways of demagnetizing I'm gonna reach over here right over here I'm gonna hide behind my own diagram here and I'm gonna grab a demagnetizer I'm gonna grab the old vintage one for the heck of it right so this guy here um, it's it still has a tag on it so it's for sale no so this this guy here I glued the back back on with instructions so the instructions basically tell you how not to get electrocuted with this thing so and there's all kinds of instructions but what you do you plug it in and there's the oh my god I'm gonna get electrocuted button this is very sketchy because this thing is probably from the 30s um, and when you take your watch movement I'll just take a an old pocket watch here that's <clears throat> I get this old pocket watch not worth much um, it's like a dollar watch but I think it's European but anyway so you take this and I found that if you put it right into the center and then pull it out it doesn't work as well it actually doesn't work demagnetizing the watch and hairspring as well as if you put it close here not inside but close like that press the button on this side here just to energize it energize the coils and then leave it there for about three seconds and then pull out slowly and you can go around one or two feet away right and that actually works and it works really well with uh with uh you know tweezer not tweet well if you get steel tweezers but uh uh screwdriver blades and stuff like that eh? so that's how you demagnetize it properly i've tried all kinds of things and when you have one of those uh 
those uh, made in Japan or made in China demagnetizers like this one here. I got a bunch of demagnetizers. I found that in this for this one here, actually, if you put it straight down and press the button, it doesn't work as well as if you hold it sideways like this, sort of in the center, press the button and then pull it up sideways. This seemed to be the best way of demagnetizing uh, a, a, pocket, a watch or a pocket watch, okay? You may have other experiences uh, and you can write me about that. So uh, that's great. So that's a little bit on demagnetizing. So before you start stripping a watch down and do the work on it, demagnetize it first and then do the work. Take a video of the watch. I usually use it my iPhone just to take a slow-mo video because I can see the, the swing, which is like the swing divided by two is actually the amplitude. So. So, uh, so I do that to start off with, uh, just to give me a good, good uh, feeling. So, and when I um, when I finish doing the uh, do work on the watch, I just shipped one out. So um, I just shipped one out to uh, to Robert. I use first names only, and I made sure I put I bought a roll of these stickers, the old Fraggle stickers, Fraggle Rock. Okay, Dozers and Fraggles. Dozers did all the work, and Fraggles ate all the construction stuff. So anyway, the old fragile sticker. So the, you can buy a roll of these off of Amazon for like 10 bucks or 15 bucks and they'll last forever. And so when you ship a pocket watch or a watch somewhere, the post office doesn't always have their stickers available. So just buy a roll of these and then just stick it on the box on both sides, just so that the, when they, when they receive it and they decide to kick it into the basket, they can aim at the fragile sticker to kick it into the basket so they can uh, do that. So. Who knows how far boxes get tossed? <laughs> I think if you, if anyone's seen the luggage at the airport, um, your luggage is not going to last very long unless you protect it. Oh, another tip while I'm off on many tangents this morning. If you want your luggage to last, take some duct tape and actually duct tape the corners of your luggage. It works like you wouldn't believe. It, the duct tape looks like crap after about two or three months of travel, and I travel a lot for business in my in my career, and, um, and I duct tape my luggage, plus you can see it right away, you know, it's that's your luggage with the corners on it, plus if there's any thieves at the airport, there's no way they think there's any jewelry in that luggage with the duct tape on it, because you look like a vagabond luggage, or a mendicant is another word for bum, I think, mendicant. Anyway, so that's another really good tip I've learned in my long and hopefully longer life so anyway today we're going to get to work on the um on this pocket watch um and install the uh the new balance staff i'm going to try fitting this i shouldn't use the word try there is no try there is no try there's do and not do or whatever he said anyway uh i'm going to try to fit this first and i think i did it in another video where i just make a little fake balance by taking a piece of cardboard I can just use the same piece of uh, tape there and I just cut a circle on the cardboard, punch a very small hole with a needle on it so I'm not stressing the pivots of the balance, and then just put that piece of cardboard um, on the balance staff and then uh, without springs or anything, and just install that on the, uh, in the movement and see if, it's, if it uh, swings freely. And that way I know that I don't have to trim the staffs down and everything kind of works perfectly in that situation. I got enough weight on that piece of cardboard to spin around. So, and I don't have to stake the balance on and then find out nothing fits. So, and if you just put the staff in with the balance cock, upper, lower, lower, upper and lower jewels in there and you put the balance in, the balance staff in on its own, you really don't know whether it's fitting properly because you put it down and know, is it going to be moving? Will it rotate freely? Whatever. So if you take a piece of cardboard and just cut it out and put that in first, it takes a few seconds to do that. You'll know if your staff is right. You can even do that when you're making balance staffs. Um, I haven't read that in any other book. It's just my uh, engineering brain going to work and thinking, what's a better way of testing this before I actually commit to staking it on, right? Because once you st have staked it on, if the balance is friction fit, not so bad, but if it's not, if it's riveted balance and you rivet it onto the staff and then you find out you gotta take it off again, there's a chance of, of ruining the arms of the balance itself. So <clears throat> I recommend you do that. Um, and I got my New York Police Department hat on, so support, support your police. They have to go through a lot of crap in their jobs. Police is a very dangerous job. Fire department, very dangerous job. And all of the military of which I've got some kids in, 
is also a very dangerous job. So support those folks that are supporting you, okay? So um, in any way you can. So I just like to say that. So as well, um, thanks for watching my videos. I, I know I blab on and on. Um, and thanks for the comments. And I've uh, there are some very very funny comments on who lights the torches in those caves. Um, they gave me names of people. Uh, the guy that did the born identity. I suppose that when he's off not acting, he lights the torches in caves. This is what I was told by somebody. Um, so the comments were actually really funny. So, so if you've got any further comments, I don't know if I have another question like that. Uh, uh, let me see. Why is a mouse when it's spinning? Because the higher it goes, the fewer. I think someone told me that uh, once. Not sure what it means, but uh, uh, is white a color? Uh, oh, I know. Only fish with really, really good posture have the chance of becoming fish sticks. I'll wait while you're laughing. The second one I have is the same type of humor. Let me focus this. How did this get out of focus all of a sudden? Did I whack it? I think the uh, pumpkin is the only animal known to man that has got triangular eyes. That's a little known fact. A little known fact. So anyway, uh, I think that might be enough blabbing away. Uh, so I'm going to uh, prop this up. i got to get my staking stuff out, but first I'm going to see if I can cut out a little circle and put the balance in there. So the new, as I said, the new balance staff looks like this. And I'll just cut a little circle out, make a pin hole with a needle. I usually have one of my pin vices. I have many pin vices, but I usually take one pin vise and leave a needle in there because you often need to, need to do that. I've also used this, this little needle here to to put to paint a dial because you need to have such precision on painting the dial all you do is dip this into the into the paint and then touch the dial like just let the paint roll into where the crack is in the dial so so I finished a watch a little while ago that I think I showed you guys and I painted the dial over a period of a month I think I worked on that because every time I'd see it I'd add another more paint to that dial which layered it on and the paint I used I'll uh, I'll tell you later. You can you can ask me and I'll send you a picture or something of the paint I use, but it was a perfect match for the dial. So so I think that's it. Um, I'll be working on uh, completing this then today, put the put everything in and hopefully this balance staff works because if it doesn't work, I'm not ordering another one, I'll end up making it. So I just it's, it's summertime and I'm busy trying to catch fish, so I'd rather not I'd rather catch fish than making balance staff. So there you go. And I'm still saying so a lot, I realized just now. So there you go. Um, any more stories? Let me think. Uh, hope everyone is safe. Hope everyone is avoiding COVID, which is excellent. I'm a person that believes in getting vaccines. I know that everybody's got their own opinion, but but I am and my, my wife and my kids and everybody's got their vaccines. So I feel a lot safer and I'll let you know if it's right or wrong about 20 years from now. We'll catch up on you. So there you go. That's it. Uh, yabber yabber, yabba dabba doo, la yada yada yada. <laughs> so so uh, let's get at it, to it and add it and add it to it. So thanks a lot. Thanks for supporting my channel. Click the bell because the bell, I guess, helps you get notified when I have a new video. Um, hit a bunch of likes on it. Uh, that also helps the algorithm. I don't make a lot of money on these videos, by the way. Not enough money maybe for coffee. Uh, that's kind of where I am. But uh, some videos that are absolutely foolish make tons of money and I actually made a video on that so I'm not prepared to become absolutely foolish just for the uh, the purpose of making revenue on on YouTube I actually do this because I want to support people that are trying to trying to do uh, this kind of work as a hobby like pocket watch uh, repair or watch repair as a hobby and just sharing what I've learned from you oh one more thing one more plug I'm gonna do here okay I got this book in the mail today I've got a book in the mail, okay? And this book is from this book is from Browser's Den of Magic. Browser's Den of Magic. So I'm doing a plug for Jeff. There's old Jeff and young Jeff on Browser's. So Browser's Den of Magic. It's in Toronto. It's 3220 Dufferin Street. Uh, number 19A. It's a great, great, exceptional magic store. 
And Jeff has been running, owns and been running the store for many, many years. And the store itself was owned by someone else before, I believe. And he supports the annual magic convention that's got 400 magicians worldwide at this place, right? That, that come to Toronto for the, uh, the magic convention. And the magicians are, Shim Ling was there, the guy that won, um, I think it was X Factor, or America's Got Talent. I think it was X Factor he won. And he sat next to me, let me see, there's a nice fan out, eh? He sat next to me in the show the year before he won. And it was pretty neat to find out that he, he won the million dollar prize. Let me see if I can make this disappear. Whoa, where is it, where is it? <laughs> Anyway, so Jeff uh, sets his show up every year. Um, it doesn't cost a lot to buy a ticket. And his magic store has been some supporting the magic community forever. I'm an amateur magician as well. Uh, I've been doing it ever since I was a kid. And I bought a book from him the other day, which is uh, pretty cool. And he actually sent me a DVD too. Free. <laughs> what the heck? This is really nice of him. Oh my God! So there's the book, As A S C A N I O Asenio. So this this is the book I bought from him. It's a it's a very very good book. And if you're a magician, and it's not just tricks and pulling rabbits out of hats. This is getting into the psychology of magic and all kinds of showmanship psychology, all the kind of things I like to read about. Because uh, just doing a trick um, is not the trick. It's the presentation of the material, um, and I think that it's it's actually all about entertainment. So if you can entertain somebody by doing like three tricks and they're just laughing their buns off and they're super entertained, then then you've done a good job because magic is an art, um, and you work at your art to become good at it. But I've seen magicians that are not great, but are, are they're not great magicians, but great entertainers, and they're sometimes more fun than than the magicians that are excellent magicians that are quiet, and you're astonished by the magic that they're doing, but you're but you're less than astonished by how they've entertained you. So, so this book is full of knowledge that I'm going to gain that uh, you're going to be have to put up with. I think maybe I'll do a couple of magic tricks before I fix a watch, right? So, so there it is. That's the book. Um, and I think those are there's a picture of the gentleman here. Uh, let me see. I'm fumbling now, so pardon me again. Yeah, I think the gentleman with the glasses is the one who wrote the book. So, so anyway, these book this is from uh, Browsers Den of Magic. Um, they're on the internet, so they do online sales as well. So you can go there and get anything from a fake thumb to the 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 ring routine to the cups routines to interesting coins i can say all i can say is interesting coins um uh plus they've got tons of videos and mo and videos and books and it's just an amazing uh, world in fact i've got a a library of magic books over against the wall that's not being shown right now over on the side here that that i've studied for many many years i do card magic i do coin magic um i do ring and string kind of stuff um, I do string kind of stuff. I do basically close-up magic. I do some magic with rubber bands, not a lot, but some what the heck tricks. Well, I like tricks that that uh, cause people to go. They, they use my wife used to use the f word. She never uses the f word, but I've done a trick. She she'd say f off after I d did the trick. So I love that kind of reaction. Um, I've done a, a little tiny bit of mentalism, not a lot, because you know you can't have a mental guy doing mentalism doesn't work so but but I uh, I've done quite a few of those but I just love uh, kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing where I'll go up to somebody it's and ask them you know if they would like to see something or if I just basically um, I was in Italy uh, I think it was four or five years ago and there's these three ladies sitting down and I showed up with a coin and a ring and <clears throat> and a uh, string that I had with me and I was able to entertain them for a solid half hour and uh, they clap. It's funny in, in Europe when you do magic, they clap after every trick. It's in, in Canada or the US, if you do a magic trick, the first people say is, first pe thing that people say is, do it again, do it again. Um, and, and then you, you do it again, but you don't do the same trick. 
you do another trick, but they think you're doing it. So you tell them, yeah, yeah, okay. And then you, you get something and you go bam and you end up bamming them again because, because you've done a completely different trick. So, so, uh, but in Europe, they, you're finished the trick and they just politely clap and cheer. It's amazing. These three ladies were sitting there and I did a first, just a coin trick quickly. And then, and they were like, they're all clapping. I was like, this is amazing. So I did, what, do I have a coin on me here somewhere? I'm not sure if I can do a trick with a coin if I don't have a coin. It's not possible to do tricks with coins when you don't have any coins on your table here. All I have is watch stuff. What the heck is going on? Let me look over here. Oh, let me hit the camera. Go hit the camera, you idiot. So I'm babbling. Oh, here's a coin. I don't know if I can do a coin trick on camera here successfully. So I did this trick here where you take you take a coin like this and then you go like that and then you go like that and the coin comes back so i think that worked i'm not sure if it worked or not anyway that is a coin trick and this is me rolling a coin down my hand and you have to learn how to do it in both hands because one hand gets lazy so you do it with both hands and that way you can f roll a coin down to the end and pick it up with the other hand and keep rolling it so so the cans don't get lazy so that's that was a quick coin trick, and if you look at it quickly, all I did was do this, and then I did this, and the coin came back. Amazing, amazing. Anyway, it's uh, more than entertaining. But uh, Jeff gave me a, he said free, free. He gave me a free DVD, which I'm impressed with, and it's called Digital Graffiti Sleight of Hand of David Peck. Digital Graffiti Sleight of Hand of David Peck and it's endorsed by Jay Sankey who's a Toronto uh, magician that's a professional magician. I'm an amateur at all this stuff so um, I'm a professional engineer who does stuff but I'm an amateur at everything else so this is very nice of Jeff so I'd like to personally thank Jeff at Browser's Den of Magic. Um, pass that along to your, your friends. Um, if you've got kids out there magic is an excellent hobby for kids. Excellent hobby. Just basic card magic like I showed you earlier all you're doing is you buy them a deck of cards and you buy and Jeff's got all this stuff but you can buy a, a you know just a basic deck of B cards or, or bicycle cards and and with the with a deck of cards they can entertain themselves endlessly people like Shim Ling and those guys that are pretty famous David Blaine all those folks they've usually had an issue in their life where they had to focus on something like I know there's one magician that was in the hospital for, for um, some ailment he had for six months and he had nothing to do and someone gave him a deck of cards and and expert at the card table is the de is the is the um, book you want to buy if you want to start off figuring out how to cheat at cards or how to do card slights and stuff it's not a magician's book it's actually a gambler's book but a lot of magicians use the slights that are in the book and if you want to learn how to take a deck here and see if I can do this and cut it with one hand like that oh that was so good that was so good that was amazing and if you want to learn how to spread the deck like this I just should basically have the um, have the other camera pointing at this stuff eh? and I, I even I can't do this this is probably not doable with my oh, like this, eh? but I'm able to actually take this deck with one hand and shuffle it together oh man I can't do it I can't do it oh yes I can there it is put that together like that and then just get rid of that because it makes me amateurish and then the cards all shuffle together see look at that so that's oh the hands way up here you don't want to do work with your hands way up here your your old man will tell you that when you're a kid he's slapping the back of it and stop doing work with your hands way up there you got to be comfortable anyway so a deck of cards you give it to your kids you buy them you buy them the book go to browsers den of magic you got millions of card books and coin books and magic books and illusions and all kinds of stuff and props and it's a really cool it's a plug for Jeff but he does a great job um, he, he's a really nice guy every time I've gone into the shop um, I've gone in there with my wife who like, actually likes magic as well and I asked Jeff to sh show my wife a trick or something and she and she goes up to the counter I do too of course and, and then, and then uh, he does something that just wows us because he's a very good magician as well so so I, I love going to Toronto to visit Browser's Den of Magic and I'll probably end up doing that again because it's summer and they're probably open and I haven't been there since co the COVID, the diabetes, since the COVID took over and caused us all to become hermits, you know, live in our homes and come out for milk and then go back in. So 
Anyway, that's a plug for Jeff, um, but he deserves it. Uh, and he gave me a book. I bought a book off him. Uh, I support the shop, make that shop run forever. There's not very many magic, magic shops left. Kids love magic. Uh, this will keep your kids busy as you like you wouldn't believe once they get very interested because you if you your kids have a curiosity at all and they start looking at magic tricks and go down that rat hole of magic um, they will be entertaining themselves forever and it's much better than sitting in front of a tv and just watch and letting the tv entertain you or playing a video game and letting the video game entertain you you need to learn things so that you can entertain so it's a much better approach to life as well. So plus, if you ever get nailed for, for grand theft and you end up in jail, the FBI's arrested you, and you got nothing to do, just say, hey, buddy, can you throw me a deck of cards? And then they'll go, bam, they'll give you a deck of cards, and you'll be popular in the big house. Popular in the big house. You'll have the biggest uh, place to live and everything. So it's good for that too. So instead of throwing a rubber ball against the wall, that kind of, that's stupid. Who, who does that? First of all, who's giving this guy a rubber ball? Because he could probably... I need names. of Why is every prison... Why is there always a rubber ball in the cell of, of you know, when you when the guy's in prison? He's got a rubber ball. There's never a deck of cards. Or he doesn't have any good books. He always just has a rubber ball, a steel bed, and a shitty mattress. So where does that rubber ball come from? That's my next question. If you could answer that, please. Where does a rubber ball come from? And... Um, and that's good. So anyway, have fun watching the Olympics this uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, I think the athletes have gotten a raw deal. Uh, they're amazing, and I know how hard athletes work. When I was younger, I was a bit of an athlete. Always had dreams of becoming an Olympic runner, um, but you know I couldn't catch up <laughs> with that dream. So, and uh, you know I had I had uh, only I only have one leg. So well, actually I've got two. I got one on each side. So I guess that's two legs. Eh? So. But anyway, <laughs> so, so, so uh, support, support the Olympics too. So It's funny, I just moved. I moved forward and my camera couldn't deal with it. So it just stalled for a second. So I think the camera is unionized. Anyway, I've been chap chatting way too long. I'm going to start work on this watch. But I'm going to put this video up first uh, because I don't want the video to be four hours and three seconds, seven seconds long. Because you guys will all say, why did you make the video so darn, so darn long? So I'm going to fit up this little piece of cardboard and see if this thing fits and I'll uh, record some of that too. And then see if the balance staff is the right staff and then we'll get to fitting this balance staff this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, I think I'm frozen again. Nope, nope, we're back. I was frozen for a millisecond. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and tell your friends about it. Support Browsers Den of Magic in Toronto. Look it up on the internet, the interweb. Browser's Den of Magic. And say hi to Jeff for me. And uh, take care. Bye.